Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our final trig substitution example, example 3, using secant. We've got the antiderivative of square root 25x squared minus 4, all of that over x. Uh, we can't really break this up because they're separate terms in the root, nothing to do, so we need to see this as some variable expression squared minus some constant expression squared, c a u squared minus a squared, and no, if we're doing trig substitution, then that's going to be a secant substitution. And we will use u equals a times secant theta when we have a u squared minus a squared form. In this example, our u is going to be 5x, because 5x times 5x is the first term, and our a is going to be 2. 2 squared is 4 there. So our substitution will be that 5x is equal to 2 secant of theta. I'm going to change this in two different ways. So first of all, if I'm substituting x and dx, I'm going to need just x so that I can get dx. So one of the things I'm going to need to do is say that x is equal to 2 over 5 secant of theta, so that when I need dx, I can just say, well, the derivative of that straight away is 2 fifths secant theta tan theta d theta. We'll need that. Another thing that I want to be able to do is also figure out what is secant theta, so I can construct my right triangle. So if we're wanting that, I really need to divide both sides by 2. So I would want to say that secant of theta is equal to 5x over 2. And we'll note that secant theta is the hypotenuse over the adjacent in a right triangle. So if my theta is here, my hypotenuse would be 5x, and then my adjacent is 2. So I still need the opposite term, this squared plus this squared equals the 5x squared. That would give us the root of 25x squared minus 4 for our third side there by Pythagorean theorem. Okay, we'll go ahead and replace everything now. So we will get the antiderivative of, uh, so don't, don't be too worried here, 25x squared, so I get uh, 2 fifths secant theta all squared, that would be a 4 on top and a 25 on bottom. You can see what's happening there, right? The 25 is going to be replaced by a 4. We'll have a secant squared theta there. That's our 25x squared. And then we'll have the minus 4 that was already there. So you notice the 25 is being really replaced by a 4 so that it matches that 4 and we get a nice multiple of a Pythagorean identity. x just goes on the bottom, so that's 2 fifths secant of theta on the bottom. And then d theta out back, we're going to go ahead and write 2 fifths secant theta tan theta d theta. Okay, with all of this, some things start to happen. Let's go ahead and do some of the things. So I have divide by two-fifths and multiply by two-fifths, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce those. Those would be one. I also have secant theta over secant theta, so that would be one as well. So we really just have tan theta d theta left back here and nothing on the bottom. Um, notice the 25s are going to reduce to one. So let's, let's write that down. We kind of had a lot of cancellation there. So uh, no fraction required here. We really just get the root of 4 secant squared theta minus 4. We have a tan theta d theta outside. Uh, we'll factor out the 4 there, right? So we'll get the square root of 4 and then secant squared theta minus 1, which is our actual Pythagorean identity. And now we'll just simply factor out the square root of 4, which is 2. So starting over here, I'll get 2. And then if I change my Pythagorean identity, I will get a single term tangent squared under the root. Write that down and not do too much in one step. I have another tan theta out there still, d theta. And then if I keep the 2, the square root of tangent squared, since we're in quadrant 1 with all these angles, is just going to be tangent. So I get another tangent from this, and I get a tangent there. So if I combine those, that's going to be tangent squared theta d theta. If you've watched our 
integrating powers of tangent video in our Cal2 list, you might have noticed integrating tangent squared theta is not actually the nicest thing to do. Um, what is really nice to do with tan squared theta is actually to think of it as secant squared theta minus 1. Both of those are really easy to do the antiderivative of because we know a derivative that is secant squared theta. So we will actually get 2 tan theta for this one. And then I would get minus theta. I'll distribute the 2 so that'll be minus 2 theta plus c here. And now we just have some replacing to do. So first I need to know what is my tangent of theta. Well, tan theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So that is going to be the square root of 25x squared minus 4 over the adjacent 2. Uh, so that 2 will reduce this 2 as well. And then if I want to know what theta is, I need to replace theta. I go back to my original statement here that secant theta is 5x over 2. That tells me that theta must be the inverse secant of 5x over 2, if that's true. So this is the inverse secant of 5x over 2. And if we replace all of that, then we will get the square root of 25x squared minus 4 as our first term. I have a 2 out here, so it'll be minus 2 inverse secant of 5x over 2 plus c. Okay, if you made it with us through all of the trig substitution videos and you've completed them all, great job, thanks for watching. If you have not, check out some of the other ones. We have other secant videos. We have ones for sine and tangent as well. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.